right, everybody, welcome to Witch Doctor. Thank you for joining. We have a very interesting uh, test that we did recently. Um, I've had a lot of recent interactions with uh, several shooters over a brief time period here, uh, over the recent, uh, over the past month. And a lot of, uh, a lot of interaction around uh, primer seeding. Um, Speedy Gonzalez sent out a video where he created a rim thickness gauge. Uh, rim thickness is this rim down here on the piece of brass. And um, you can measure thickness with a caliper. Um, or uh, he demonstrated a very nifty little tool that measures rim thickness. Now he's not selling this tool, so don't contact him about it. But um, um, he, he made one uh, for himself uh, to measure rim thickness uh, for different uh, calibers of brass. So anyway, that was interesting. Um, Bart Souter also commented on a post about the value of weighing primers. Uh, I received several questions also from private messages, emails, uh, other means. Uh, it's as if the world was telling me, uh, you need to do some more primer testing. So um, I went ahead and did so. And um, thus far I've done some primer testing. Um, what I've done so far is I looked at uh, variations in seating depth and how that affects precision. Um, I also looked at uh, weight sorting primers. Okay, so for weight sorting, um, I demonstrated how variations of primer weights produce uh, variations in velocity. Um, and so you have a pretty light weighing set of primers, and then you have a heavy weighing set of primers. And if you shoot those separately, you'll see that the lighter ones produce much lower velocity than the heavier ones um, by, by quite a bit. Um, and then I also demonstrated how those variations in velocity can actually show up on target as vertical dispersion in as short as 200 yards. Um, so it's um, definitely important uh, to make sure that your primers have some uniformity in their weight. Um, also, if you ever wonder why I win a lot of 200 yard aggregates in short range bench press matches, well, weight sorting primer is probably one big reason why. Um, because when you look at the, the shape of the groups that I shoot at 200, you see very little vertical dispersion. Well, I think it's because I weight sort primers. But anyway, um, and then for seating variation, just to summarize, what I found is that different depths of seating produce different levels of precision. And so, you know, if you seat it really, really shallow, almost flush uh, with the rim there, uh, or the case head, whatever you want to call it, um, then uh, you get a lot of flyers, you get poor precision. But as, as you go in deeper and deeper, um, there's a sweet spot. And what my data showed is the sweet spot was somewhere around seven to nine thousandths depth, um, assuming a certain pocket depth. So it is, it is uh, dependent on pocket depth. And the main factor that I found in precision was how much you're compressing that anvil. Um, the anvil is the piece of the primer that is like sticking out of the cup. And so that's, that's the key is how much you're actually like compressing that, that anvil, that part of the, the primer there that sticks out of the, the cup. Um, so anyway, basically, uh, two major findings. Um, I've utilized both in real world application, um, and shot really well, um, but there are other questions that loomed about primer seating, and uh, hopefully you'll see in this um, series of tests uh, how I've, uh, we'll say, uh, elucidated or clarified um, certain issues with primer seating depth. Okay, so what I did was I took an old lot of brass um, where I noticed some variations in primer seating depth. And, um, I don't know, there was maybe a hundred brass pieces in there. So I just reached in and grabbed a handful of brass pieces, um, counted them and put a couple back because I wanted to just settle on doing, using 20, uh, pieces of brass. So 20 pieces of brass pretty much randomly just grabbed out of a, a lot. 
Um, I numbered each piece of brass with a marker. So there's number one. And let's see, oh, there's number 18. Um, so I numbered them so that I can track each piece of brass. Um, I then measured their primer pocket depth with uh, calipers. Uh, let me deprime. I, I still have a primer in this one. Let me deprime it real quick. Um, basically, you just set your caliper at zero. That's one way to measure depth right there, 124. So anyway, um, measured the primer pocket depth. Also measured the rim thickness of every piece. So wanted to get a, a gauge on how thick the rim is for every piece of brass. And, um, and basically then I input this all into a database. Um, you've seen, probably seen previous videos, you know that I use uh, Excel databases quite often in these tests. So um, then what I did is I took my PMA tool. This is a hand priming tool that I use for short range bench rest matches with six PPC cases. These are six PPC cases. And um, I then seeded Federal 205M primers. And I used the same exact primers throughout this entire test. They're Federal 205 match primers, um, all from the same lot. Um, they were all weight sorted. Um, and I uh, used those primers throughout all those tests. So <clears throat> what I did with the PMA tool is I went ahead and seated. I set the tool to seat at 8,000. So... What I found with my primer seating depth tests is 8,000 seems to be a sweet spot with pockets that are, you know, um, with pockets that have this level of depth that you just saw here. Uh, okay, now I can't find the piece of brass without the, oh, here it is. <laughs> so in pockets that have this level of depth, seating the primer into there about uh, 8,000 seems to produce uh, pretty good results. So. Um, so anyway, I went ahead and set the tool to seat at 8,000th. I seated all the primers. Um, and when I seat with this tool, um, I throw the brass piece in, do an initial full, full force seat. And then I turn it about 180 degrees and give it a second one. Um, I find that that makes it a little more uniform. So that's how I use this PMA seating tool. And then I measured all of the seating depths. So I have this Holland tool, which gives me pretty pretty rapid measurement. Um, and then I also verified using calipers. Um, the measurements were pretty much lined up. This tool and calipers uh, get about the same measurement. I mean, very, uh, very little variations between the two. And if there is, it's like a half a thousand, which is kind of the reception or the, you know, the capability of this set of calipers anyway. So, um, all right. And then, so I seated all of them. I measured the depth. I then deprimed them. Again, I have this nifty little Frankfurt Arsenal depriming tool. And so after I deprimed them, then I, um, took the pieces of brass and I used my Lee seating tool to seat them. Um, one of my patrons uh, turned me on to this tool, said, hey, have you seen F-Class John's video on this tool? And I said, no, but I will look at it. So they posted the link. I watched the videos of F-Class John um, using this Lee priming tool. And then I went and I kind of investigated, you know, the design of the tool. Um, and at that point decided to go ahead and purchase it. It's called the Lee ACP. I went ahead and installed the modification that F-Class John indicated that would enable me to adjust primer seating depth um, with this bolt here. And then I put a lock nut in there. So I did the recommendations that, if, well, what, at least this recommendation that F-Class John uh, indicated would enable me to have variable seating. And I seeded all the primers with this tool. Again, same primers. I set the tool to seed at 8,000s. 
and then I went through and seeded all 20 primers and then I went once again measured the depth of all of them and um, put all that in the database again then I deprimed all the brass once again <laughs> um, and by the way this deprimed um, these deprimed primers do not use them if you're shooting matches because once you pop it out with this thing it ruins I mean the prime I, I don't want to, they're not completely ruined they will fire but I get massive standard deviations when I shoot these uh, deprimed primers so just FYI I would not use them for anything other than fire forming or plinking loads or something like that definitely uh, not match loads anyway so deprimed it and then I uh, spoke with uh, a friend of mine who's a fellow Bentress shooter here, lives locally, uh, 15 minutes away. And uh, he's been talking to me a lot about priming and things like that. And uh, he indicated he has a primal rights uh, bench seater. And so I told him, hey, you know, can I come down and check out your reloading shop and, and use that primal rights seater? And um, he said, yeah, come on by. So I went by the other day. Again, took the same 20 pieces of brass, the same primers, and we set the primal rights tool to see it at 8 thousandths depth. And then uh, I went ahead and primed all 20. And it once again, you know, measured the seating depth on all of them. Uh, my friend Lee, uh, he also had this really cool seating depth tool that we looked at, but I primarily used uh, these two tools to measure the seating depths. Um, and then basically, once again, put all that data into a database. So let's go ahead and see what the data says. All right, and I will post this image of the data um, in the video here, probably at the end, just in case you wanna see it, um, or message me and I'll send you the file. But here's the data. So all the brass numbers, one, one, one through 20, pocket depth of each one, and so so one row here represents one piece of brass, its pocket depth, the rim thickness, um, how deep the PMA tool seated the primer, the amount of error in the primer. So for example, here you see the PMA seated brass number one uh, at 0 .009, 9 thousandths depth. That, since the tool, all three tools were set at 8 thousandths, that represents 1 thousandths error. The Lee for brass number, I'm sorry, for, yeah, brass number one, seated at eight thousandths, which is zero error. Primal rights seated at seven thousandths, which is one thousandths error, okay? And so that's how the database was set up. And, um, and then I tallied up overall amount of error, total error variation from the eight thousand setting. And as you can see here, <laughs> interestingly, the PMA, had 32 thousandths of total error, the Lee had six thousandths of total error, and the Primal Rights had 60 thousandths total error. So the Lee was almost completely errorless, <laughs> very little error, the PMA a little bit, and then the Primal Rights a lot. Okay, so um, overall the data show that, you know, yes, there is some variation in pocket uh, depth and Definitely some variation in rim thickness. And it also shows, you know, the Lee tool having almost no error, PMA a little bit, and then primal rights a lot. Okay, so you may be wondering, well, what is causing this error? You know, what's the deal with this? And then why does the Lee have almost no error? That's ridiculous. Okay, well, let's look at it. This is the reason why I did this testing. Um, was it the pocket depth? Well, the pocket depth, no. It does not correlate with primer seating depth. There's no correlation there. there. It wasn't significant, and the magnitude wasn't even that big. So there's no correlation between pocket depth with the PMA and the primal rights. No correlation. So it can't be pocket depth. As long as your pocket is deep enough to seat your primer appropriately and compress your anvil to whatever level you need it compressed, um, pocket depth should not be a factor, and it certainly was not here. Um, was it rim thickness? Well, holy crap, yes. 
<laughs> um, the PMA tool, there's almost a perfect correlation between rim thickness and primer seating depth. So, and um, so if the rim was less thick, then it would have a shallow seating depth. If it was really thick, then it would not have a shallow seating depth. It would have a deeper seating depth. That was the relationship between rim thickness and primer seating depth. Now, this correlation is almost a perfect correlation. This, you, you very rarely see correlations this significant and to this magnitude. It was like a 0.95 or something. Um, so it was massively high correlation. Same thing with the primal rights, extremely high correlation level. Uh, and so basically, rim thickness is the major factor in primer seating depth. Okay, so why is that? Well, let's take a look here closely. One second. Okay, so you're probably wondering how is rim thickness such a major factor in primer seating depth? Um, it's simple. Put your piece of brass inside your shell holder. Shell holders are designed to allow some variation in rim thickness. All you got to do is pull up and down and you'll see the piece of brass, or you'll feel it and see the piece of brass going up and down in that shell holder. Um, the reason why they allow a little bit of variation is because, well, shell holder manufacturers know that there's going to be some variation. <laughs> and so they don't want their, their shell holders to be too narrow because then, you know, a lot of shells won't fit and people will complain, right? So they allow that little bit of variation there. And, uh, and so basically the PMA tool is a shell holder, you know, um, tool. And according to the data, um, it is dependent on rim thickness. So depending on how thick my rims are, that's going to affect how deep this tool seats the primer. Okay. And the same thing is with primal rights. When I went and I inspected the primal rights tool, um, I read through the whole manual. Um, I looked it over pretty good. Um, spoke with my friend Lee about his use of it. And he, he said, yeah, you know, it, it uses this shell here. And I grabbed a piece of brass and I was able to, you know, show and demonstrate how um, the piece of brass moves up and down in the shell holder. Okay, so that's the key. If you have a shell holder dependent priming tool, that's the reason why you get variations in primer seating. Well, one major reason why you get variations in primer seating depth. Okay, so how is it that the Lee had so little error and there was no correlation with rim thickness and primer seating depth with the Lee? Uh, like no correlation at all it was not significant and the magnitude was very minimal so for whatever reason the Lee is able to produce very little error and has no correlation with rim thickness why well it doesn't have a shell holder <laughs> so <laughs> this is actually a part of the design that I think um, is leading to very little error in you know with this tool and uh, here on their website now this is not the Lee ACP but it is something that can just that's on their website that can demonstrate kind of what is happening inside the Lee ACP there's a rod inside there that goes down into the piece of brass and holds it down okay so there's this rod that goes in it's located in in here okay let me push the piece of brass in and so it goes in holds the brass piece down and you can see there the bottom piece there compresses just a little bit and then pushes the primer in place okay so there's no shell holder there's no variation going up or down there's a rod that's holding this puppy down Okay, and seating the primer. Okay, so the design itself uh, seems to eliminate the rim thickness dependency issue that you have with 
primer tools that utilize shell holders. All right, so in conclusion, um, tools that utilize shell holders are going to be rim thickness dependent. And, um, you know, all brass pretty much has variations in rim thickness. So um, that's going to be your major factor um, in terms of primer seating depth. Uh, and interestingly, the PMA tool showed a lot less error than the primal rights. Um, and when I looked at the data of the error uh, with the PMA tool and primal rights, um, what I found was the primal rights consistently had shallower seating depths. So there's something going on with that tool that not only produces error, which I think is from the shell, um, because again, it's rim thickness dependent tool, the, um, so the shell holder is driving a lot of its error, but there's also additional error, almost double the amount of error from, let's say a tool like this, the PMA tool, um, that's going on with the primal right. So there's something else going on with it that's producing even more error. And systemically looking at the data, uh, there seems to be shallower seating depths. So it just seems like there's something in the mechanism that is not pushing that primer in enough, Some something going on there. So anyway, um, what do I do though, Brian, if I wanna, <laughs> or which doctor, if I want to um, use tools like this? Because, you know, I use this tool all the time at the shooting range during matches while I'm reloading at the range. So um, I'm gonna continue to use this tool. Well, what do you do is you, you basically seat a primer, go about and seat it how you would, and then measure how deep it is. Okay, so this one here is measuring only six thousandths. Okay, uh, five and a half, six thousandths. So this is gonna fall out of my tolerance. Okay, I'm not gonna accept this. I want this thing to seat seven, eight, or nine thousandths. I'm willing to accept plus or minus one thousandths tolerance. Six is outside of that. So this one becomes, uh, I don't know, I'll either throw it away or I will put a marking on it somehow and it'll just be a Fowler shot or a cold bore shot, okay? I might have, um, you know, a section or a set of brass for cold bore shots, okay? Um, but for, let's say, brass that does measure within spec, okay, let's say it is, um, shoot, this one's just almost 10,000, so this one's too deep. Yeah, nine and a half thousand. So. That one's out too, <laughs> but you'll find a whole lot that will get you right at, you know, seven, eight, nine thousandths, whatever your tolerance may be. Mine is plus or minus thousands. Uh, I was chatting with Speedy about, or texting with Speedy about this. He said his tolerance is half a thou. Uh, mine's a thou. But anyway, um, once you find them that are within your tolerance, then you, you keep those and you shoot those on your record target uh, or, you know, you have uh, wind ciders or whatever. Um, use them that way. So that's how I plan on doing it, is just using actual seating depth itself as a proxy for rim thickness and just sorting the brass accordingly. This set of brass, uh, you know, holds it to within my tolerance. That set of brass is outside the tolerance and I'll use it for a cold board fowler or something like that, okay? Or not use it all, just trash it. Um, so that's what I'll do for range. For, for at home, uh, preloading, uh, we'll use the Lee. Um, I've already used it on hundreds of uh, loads and it is almost error free. Again, it, the data that I presented here uh, is very similar, uh, essentially the same um, as uh, all, you know, several hundreds of uh, primer, priming that I've just done over the past couple weeks to two, three weeks with it. So it has been solid uh, and it has been priming uh, just about as perfect as I've ever seen uh, any priming tool. So uh, so that enables me to not have to separate brass pieces out. I then can actually use all the brass pieces in the lot, um, assuming there's no other, you know, uh, no other deformities or other problems with the brass. But I'm I'm now able to use more pieces of brass because this thing 
uh, the Lee is um, not a rim thickness dependent uh, shell holder type primer seeder. So, um, so that's what I'll do. I'll continue using these at matches and I will use the Lee when I'm at home. All right, well, um, everyone take care. Hope you have a, a great holiday season coming up and uh, please join my Patreon. We have a really good community going on there. Um, again, this Patreon community is where people were sharing information about F-Class John and his uh, modifications to the Lee primer, the Lee ACP primer, um, and numerous other things. Um, some of the users have been, uh, some of my patrons have been emailing me their data. Um, one of them emailed me their data with the primal rights tool, um, showed the high degree of error uh, in that tool um, because the user um, had did the same thing, you know, used the primal rights, seeded a bunch of primers, measured the depths, put it in a spreadsheet, or it had, or I think he had some kind of fancy uh, electronic system that did that for him. But either way, um, sent me that data, showed the high degree of error in the primal rights tool. And uh, so we're, we're having really good interactions um, with the patrons. I've been posting all the preliminary results of this stuff um, as it comes in so that they can see right away what's going on with all these tasks and uh, what the data is starting to show. We've already had a few patrons um, have went back and <laughs> now they're buying the Lee ACP up, what's left of them anyway, because I heard they're discontinued. Um, so yeah, lots of really good stuff going on there. So I highly recommend that you join. All right, thanks everybody, take care.